As, as has been mentioned numerous times already this morning, this is the greatest country there is upon the face of the earth. We are privileged to live here, to have the, the great privileges of living, working, worshiping as we choose. And um, certainly for that, each of us need to be thankful. Having said that, I want to share with you this morning some scripture that probably is being fulfilled more today than any time in the history of our country. It, it is uh, concerning to me, it is troubling to me, as, as much scripture is, because I, I truly recognize that with every effort that, that we try to make to think that we're going to make a perfect world here, it's not going to happen, folks. Not according to the word of the Lord. And I, if I understand the word of the Lord, and lots of it I don't, I'll admit to that to you right up front. I do not see personally that it's going to get any better. Now, it may get better in some people's lives, but I'll guarantee you it's going to get worse in a lot of people's lives. And I believe that we need to understand that we are living in some very serious times. I'm not up here this morning to blame all the politicians, but they have their share to take. I'm not up here to blame all of the social workers in the world because they probably have their share to take. But I am here to say this morning that each one of us have to act some, some of the responsibility ourselves and we're very quickly reaching the point of where we do not want to do that. We want to put the blame on everyone else and we want to point the finger at everything else and everyone under the sun and say all of these things are happening because of them, not because of me. It is, it is a tough time. The tr thing that troubles me, I guess, is that you've got to try to figure out just where that you divide that line in saying this is a fulfillment of Scripture, and yet we need to try to do better than what we're doing. I'm not willing to just be a defeatist and say, well, there's nothing I can do about it anyway, because there is. I can live my life as best I can, and that's not very good at best. But I certainly have to accept responsibility for the way that I live my life and the way that I conduct myself while I'm here. Every single one of us impact the lives of other people. I yesterday afternoon conducted another service for ladies whose little husband was probably not much more than just aware as to what was going on. But even as I conducted the service and as I spoke to him, I could recognize there were a few things that were getting through to him. His first statement to me whenever I met him was he says, I know you. Me and you have been together before. I don't believe probably I'd ever seen him ever before in my life. But I said, well, you know what? I, I, I do see a lot of people. And maybe we have somewhere. Now the point that I want to make is, is that not a single one of us know what lies ahead for us. And we never know when that, as we live today, the impact that we are going to make on other people's lives. For good or for bad. But I want you to listen 
to what the Lord said in His Word concerning the times that we're living in. And I, I like to, first of all, go back over and review a little bit out of the Old Testament of what happened before the Lord sent the destruction upon the earth and destroyed the, the, the world by, by water. And we all know what the Bible says. He says that God looked down and saw the very intents of man and were continually evil. The thoughts and the intents of man's heart were continually evil. We're not doing much better than that today, people. We like to think we are. And we're doing probably the best that we can. But sometimes I'm not sure that's enough. I think what's happened is, is that we've forgotten to call on the one who can give us the help that we need to live our lives just a little better. And that's the Lord. The Lord to His children many, many times said, What have you found wrong with me? Why have you gone away from me? What's happened? And I think we could rightly ask that same question today. What, what has happened to us today? We've forgotten the Lord. We have forsaken the Lord. We are not in the place that I'm sure is that we should be. Oh, we like to talk about how the Lord is blessing us, and He still is. I'm, I'm not going to deny that. I would not want to take that away from Him. But I'm convinced that we're not being nearly as blessed as we could be and as we should be. Jesus had his disciples ask him and said, you know, what, what, give us some signs. Tell us, when are all these things going to happen that you've been talking to us about? And I want you to listen to what the Lord said. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. There's a lot of deception going on in our world today. A lot of deception going on in our world. Again, I'm not in any position to point fingers to anyone. I'm just to tell you exactly the truth. And we just as a child of God need to be very careful and to be very considerate of what we are listening to and what we are responding to and how we're responding to, what we are hearing, to see whether or not it's consistent with the Word of the Lord. Let me tell you something. It doesn't make any difference to me how much you want to talk to me about the laws of our land or how much you want to talk about the history of our land and how much that we want to talk about what has been. What's going to count is what's going on today and how we are going to measure up to what the Word of the Lord says. God's Word does not change. God's Word is infallible. God's Word is perfect. God's Word is going to stand in judgment and you and I are going to be judged by that standard. His Word. Not by what Elkton Baptist Church believes or what Elkton Baptist Church practices or what Elkton Baptist Church thinks. Or what you think, even though you're not a part of Elkton Baptist Church, that's not going to be the standard. The standard is going to be what thus saith the Lord God. The first thing Jesus said to His disciples here in this particular setting was, Be careful, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in My name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. There are many out here today who are running around under the guise of Christianity and serving the Lord that they're doing the farthest thing from serving the Lord and following the Lord. And all you've got to do is just again check the word of the Lord. You don't have to take my word for it. I don't want you to just take my word for it. But for heaven's sake, don't just take their word because there is much deception and you and I have the responsibility to study the Word of the Lord so that we know the difference. 
You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. There has never been a time whenever that we're hearing more of the turmoil and the upheavals that are going in in our world today. Men are literally spending their lives in trying to establish peace. When you study the word of the Lord, you're going to find that as much as they're trying, it is not going to be successful because that's contrary to what the word of the Lord teaches. But Jesus said, See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in all diverse places. I, I, of course, I read, I'm certainly interested in the last part of the earthquakes, because obviously you all know Southern California was hit again over uh, the last couple of days, and, and, and I... I sent to someone and said, you know, uh, whenever you get over six points, I'll guarantee you there's some shaking. I've been through a few of those. I've been through the sevens and the nines. But I'll guarantee you that the six is enough that it'll wake you up and get your attention. As I, they've been having earthquakes for years. They have. But there will be one one of these days. And I know that probably it's, it's a laughing thing to say that, well, finally there's going to be one there on the San Andreas Fault that's going to split California off from the rest of the United States. And that'll be a blessing to the rest of the United States, but uh, I, I'm not sure that I subscribe to that. But let me tell you something. California is not the only place that has earthquakes. It's not been, it's been since I've been back here that we've had some in this part of the country. And they're going to have another one one of these days. There's still some things that are going to happen, folks. But we need to understand that these things are happening. We need to understand, we need to, I, I, you've heard me say a number of times that for people who just like to be oblivious to what's going on in the world, I'm going to tell you right now, you're, 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 you're missing out on a lot of things. And a lot of things probably you're going to say, well, I don't even want to know about. There are a lot of things probably none of us want to know about. But ignorance is not bliss. And ignorance is not excusable. And ignorance is not acceptable. There's too many of God's people who kind of like to be ignorant about the word of the Lord. They say, well, I don't really care what the word says because this is what I believe anyway. Well, it don't make any difference to me what you believe. It's what, what God's word says is going to stand. I hope they're consistent and I hope they're the same, but they're not always all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. This is what Jesus said to his disciples. Hey, fellas, this is what you've got to look forward to. Do you think they were very excited? Do you think they were very happy to hear this? Do you think they said, oh, great, you know, this is, what, this is what's going to happen to us and we're just going to stay right in there and fight the fight and win the battle and we'll overcome these things. Only one of them lived to be an old man and died of natural causes. But let me tell you, there are a lot of people that are still going to go through as much as they did. Is it going to be me? I, have, I doubt it. I doubt it. Is it going to be you? I doubt it. But I don't know that. I don't know how rapidly things are going to continue to deteriorate to the point of where that God is going to finally say, that's enough. But I'm going to tell you right now, we're not on the upward when it comes to it. We're on the downward spiral. Shall be afflicted and kill you. And then shall many be offended. There has never been a time in my preaching when that you've got to be more care you've got to be more no, 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 something. That you have to be more careful today than ever in preaching because people are so easily offended. It doesn't take much for them to get their feelings hurt. And most of the time it's over some little something that doesn't amount to a hill of beans. But it's enough for them to be justified in taking the position of it and say, well, I don't want to have to go hear that anymore. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Many shall be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall, arise, shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I tell the story every once in a while, and some of you have heard me tell it, of the little boy who went to his Sunday school, and back in, I don't know what they do anymore, I've been out of little kids' classes for so long, I don't know what they ever think about studying and having a memory verse. I don't even see any of my teachers here this morning could tell me yes or no that they do, but anyway, we used to have to learn a memory verse every Sunday. And then you could recite it. And the, remember, and the memory verse for this particular Sunday was, Many are called, but few are chosen. And this little boy went home and told his mama that he had learned the memory verse at, church, at Sunday school that Sunday morning. And she said, Well, okay, you recite it to me. And he said, Many are cold, and a few are frozen. <laughs> I can't help but think of that when I think about that the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, when I, here, here, if you want to know when the end is going to come, it tells you right here in the scripture. Some of you say, Oh, now, preacher, the Bible says. No man knoweth the day nor the hour, not even the angels of heaven, but God alone. That's right. And this is consistent with that. But listen, if you want to know. The Bible says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I told you, didn't it? Now, the kicker in that is, is you don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know when that's going to happen. So I can't anymore tell you today of when that's going to be than I could have before I read you that verse. But, you know, if you're just wanting to be able to know when the end is going to come, there it is. Let me, let me read you more, some more very quickly because we do have to have another part of the service here this morning. I was so proud of myself. I looked at the, I looked at the time that I preached last Sunday. It's 13 minutes. Man, that, that, I, I felt good about that. I wish I could do a little better job of saying this that than, than I have. Listen. Know this, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. I want you to listen to what Paul wrote to Timothy and see if maybe you can't see a few of these things happening today. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Man, you know, this, is quite a, this is quite a checklist. So far, I haven't found any of them there that I couldn't put a finger on of it being in existence today. You don't have to look very far, folks. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We spend so much time today in getting so smart that sometimes we're just dumb. We just need 
to get by. Just saying, Lord, I do need your help. I do need your spirit to direct me. I do need to have your presence in my life every day. I need a lot less of the lot of the junk and the debris that's in my life and more of you in my life. We need to do that, people, because I will guarantee you that if we think that the worst is over and the better is to come, the only way that that's going to happen is for us to leave this walks of this life. And I'd like to stay just a little longer and try to make it a little better place. But most importantly, to let people know that of all the things they're ever going to do in life, the most important thing is to listen to that still small voice as it speaks to their heart. Heed the directions of the Lord and allow Him to redeem their soul. And that'll be the best piece of advice that I'll ever be able to give to anyone. It's important. All these other things, they're eventually going to disappear anyway. That's going to be forever. Forever.